good. We definitely got the weld set, flattening dies. Let's use to see how these drawing dies work out to elongate it. See so yellow hot, and then we'll we get the weld set, and we'll draw it out a little bit with this eight-ton log splitter converted. I'm gonna feed it in with my left. So I've always wanted to get a forging press, some way to crush down the metal to um, not have to spend as much time on the anvil with the hammer. And also give me a chance maybe to do Damascus and all kinds of other things I've been wanting to do. Maybe even make a, a nice katana with the uh, hard steel on the outside, soft steel on the inside. But I really needed some kind of a power hammer or a press. And I've decided to convert this eight ton log splitter from Powerhouse. Got this from Northern Tool Company. I actually bought it through Amazon, but Northern Tool Company is the source. Had it delivered. It's a three horsepower electric motor and it uses a hydraulic system. It has a nice ram. One thing that's good about converting this kind of a log splitter to a press is that you really have the piston coming straight down. So if you build up an anvil here, you can, and you have to change this up so you can put in your dies for whatever you want to, whatever kind of crushing you want to do. 
um, but it's going to be easy to convert. What I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to remove these rails. I don't really need these because I'm not going to be log splitting. And I'm going to <clears throat> buy some metal to raise up this surface to this surface to about here. I'll weld it into position. I'm going to remove this. Comes off really easily just with this one bolt. Then this slides out the bottom. I'm going to redo this so that it doesn't have this, but it's just some uh, three three quarter inch uh, steel plate, about three and a half inches wide. And I'll hook that up with angle iron so I can slide in different dies. And I want to try to get my work up right around here. I'll actually bolt this down to my work table. That'll be easy. Um, the anvil will be easy. This will be a little bit tricky, the conversion. And I'm also going to work on this to get this rock out of here because any deflection, when I, when I start squishing things, if this deflects backwards, I'm losing a little bit of energy there. These are usually set up kind of loose so that when they do log splitting, if they start hitting a certain knot or something, it almost works around the knot. But in my case, I want it to be more, I want it to move smoothly, but I want it to be more absolute so I can get a nice crush effect for flattening or fullering or whatever I want to do. So when I redo this, this 3 8 steel, I'm going to make it a little bit wider so there's less slop here. I'm going to redo this collar so there's less slop here. And I'm going to shim the cylinder. If you notice, it's kind of leaning this way. So I'm going to shim, metal shim in right here to help get this more exactly vertical. And I think I'll be able to get a nice straight uh, drive and get rid of that slop. And you know, I'll end up with a really good press for around, this costs about $550, about $200 delivered, and all the, all the scrap metal I'm gonna need. Uh, so around eight, $800, I'll have a, a really good press. I don't think I'll be able to do, you know, a stack that big with Damascus, but maybe a stack that big could be good, or to, or to crush down uh, a taco shape around some soft steel for a katana. So it's going to really make a difference on how much hammering I'm doing. So I think that'll be really nice and allow me to make a lot, a lot more things uh, when I do my forging. So I'm looking forward to it. But again, I think it'll, I think it'll be a pretty easy conversion. So the next video will show how it's actually going to be done. These, this is all just theory. I've tested this out today. Uh, it works really good. So I think the conversion will work well. I just want to show you guys some of the detail on this conversion of this um, 8 ton log splitter by power horse over to a forging press. So what I did is I removed the existing piece here. So this goes up and down inside of a rail. So I undid the bolt that was there and I took it out the bottom of the rail and then I made a new piece. So I used three quarter inch steel. This is six inches by three inches. And then I welded on the, a collar piece. I'll show you in the description below. Drill the hole through, put the bolt in and I welded that piece onto some three eight steel back here. This is I think also around four inches by six inches. And then I also welded in a little piece of three eighths inch metal here to give support. So this one's welded onto this plate and then a little one here is welded to this collar to give it a little more strength. And then this was just some um, piece from the junkyard. I think it cost about 40 bucks. And I got some 3 8 or some 3 quarter inch um, steel plate, welded that onto the top. 
and then I got a, another um, three-quarter inch piece of steel here plate uh, that is I think it's three by six also welded that on and then I've got the angle iron pieces put in position so this um, drawing die has a flat flattening die here this is just uh, one by one this is six inches long and I did grind off about three inches of it to be a uh, drawing die and the other one is flat for flattening die so I got that on top of the um, three inch, inch plate steel here and got that into position welded it in and I lined up another one on top and then I put on the angle iron and welded a bead across the bottom on both sides so these these dies can slide in and out did the same thing on the top matching die and these have worked out really good so far I still need to do super easy but I gotta just do um, drill a hole down through the angle iron down into the 3 8 plate just so it's indexed so, the, so that this won't move around because right now there is a little bit of movement as you're doing your pressing I want it to lock in I'll do the same here just put a pin in there to hold it and this is just being held on by a welded some angle iron put a screw in there did the same on this side just welded some angle iron put a screw in one over here to hold this in place but um, I've seen other people where they have uh, put steel plate on top of this and then welded a piece of angle iron so they could slide this in and out I think that's a good idea to make this more stable because right now this rocks a little bit doesn't seem to have any effect on um, when I'm uh, squishing the metal but might help and I did put a metal shim right here in between this piston and this holder because these two come in from the side and create inward tension but it's kind of like on a pivot so this piston has a little bit of play it can move back and forth and I wanted this to be pretty stable so I just shimmed here Keep that nice and straight but it seems to work good um, this when you first play with it seems kind of stiff and difficult to create the up and down movement but uh, when you're actually doing it it seems fine and this extra play doesn't seem to affect what's going on so I'm pretty happy with it if I get the metal <clears throat> like yellow hot I can draw it out pretty quick I can flatten it. I've been making Damascus steel and that's really what I wanted to be able to do. So I'm not using, I'm not doing huge amounts. I'm doing like uh, about this big of a stack and I can flatten it out nice and flat like that. And just have maybe after about three heats. So pretty happy with this. Um, you know, if you were to buy something like this, already done that has this much force you might be up around four thousand bucks this costs about seven hundred and fifty with all the parts and all I'm probably up around a thousand so pretty good pretty happy with it I did take off the wheels didn't really need them uh, what other modifications this is all the same this on off switch is the same as when, when I got it got the oil in there uh, I did take off the handles, there wasn't any reason for them. And if you wanted to convert this back to a log splitter, it wouldn't be that hard. You could just take this off, add the uh, wedge back on, and you're ready for, you're ready for log splitting.